Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today I wanted to talk about Battlefield's worst features. These are things that existed in past Battlefield games that were absolutely game-breaking or just universally hated design decisions by the community. I think it's both fun and important to go back and look at some of these features because it can remind us of just how far the franchise has come over the years or perhaps maybe some of the lingering features that still need to be dealt with. Why don't we start off with a feature from Battlefield 3, the game that I began my YouTube channel with, and this was something that I think just about everyone who played the game really didn't like, and that was the blue tint. Everything in Battlefield 3 had this extremely exaggerated blue tint or color grade to it. And back in 2011, when DICE was really showing off their Frostbite engine, a lot of games were doing this, but especially EA was really over tinting and over exaggerating the color spectrum in their games. And frankly, it looked awful. They were kind of mimicking what movies were doing, but guess what? In a competitive video game, you really don't want to crush your color spectrum for the sake of creating a certain vibe because it actually really hinders gameplay, visibility, and other things like that. Even going back now to Battlefield 3, the contrast between modern game color grading, which is usually a lot more subtle, uh, it's night and day. It's very hard to look at Battlefield 3. Next feature on the list is another thing that Battlefield 3 introduced, and that was suppression. Suppression has been in Battlefield games for a while in various forms, but man did Battlefield 3 do it wrong. Basically, if a bullet passed by your character in Battlefield 3, your screen would get blurred and your bullets would deviate like crazy. It was comically overpowered and game breaking in many situations and I think most people universally hated it. Now I've actually seen some good arguments for bringing suppression back into Battlefield but in more tactical ways like only allowing the support class to suppress or only allowing the sniper class to get suppressed. There's some interesting ideas about how to reintegrate it into the game tactically but when it comes to Battlefield 3 the implementation was terrible and it's one of the things that makes it hard to actually go back Back and play that game sometimes. Now, speaking of the random bullet deviation caused by suppression, well, random bullet deviation was another feature that was pretty much universally hated when Battlefield 1 first launched. Now, the devs did fix a lot of the gameplay in Battlefield 1, but by the time they really kind of found their groove, a lot of the player base had kind of given up on that title. The gunplay at launch was so bad, I remember the devs explaining how people should be aiming for center mass so that their bullets would spread out and hit more parts of the body. Body, which really just didn't account for players hiding behind cover or going prone, making themselves smaller targets. There was very little ways to outskill a player that just had better cover than you, and it really hampered the gunplay. All right, next on the list of the worst features is the Battlefield Assignment System. To be honest, you could probably pick just about any Battlefield game's assignment system over the last 10-ish years of titles, but Battlefield 5 really just took things to a new level of awful. I don't know how DICE has always been missing the mark with their in-game assignments, especially considering that they're so important to end game and leveling content to give players something interesting or meaningful to do, but the assignment system in Battlefield 5 in particular really forced players to do obscure weird things that didn't help out the team, that were not fun to do, that were super laborious, that were extremely difficult to pull off and you had to do it in like one round and so players were just like banging their heads against their keyboards. The Battlefield 5 assignment system is an absolute nightmare and I hope it's a top priority for DICE in the next games, but man, this is one of those things that has not only been not good in previous Battlefield games, but it's somehow gotten worse and worse and worse. Hopefully DICE gets the message this time around and 2042 has a great assignment system. The next worst feature on the list are extremely exploitable and game-breaking gadgets. I would throw the Battlefield 1 Airburst Mortar into this category and the Battlefield 4 UCAV. And there's certainly a few other gadgets that could sneak their way onto this list, but this seems to be one of those things that DICE just can't stop themselves from doing is including some sort of like indirect fire gadget that just gets really, really powerful. The Battlefield 1 Airburst Mortar went through a lot of design changes to make it less awful than it was at launch but it's still very powerful and very annoying to fight against and there's no limitation of how many of them you can have on the battlefield so some maps that would get really clustered i'm thinking like argon forest you would be seeing 
tons of airburst mortar and you're just dying to this stuff flying through the air exploding over your head where the guy was shooting it from behind cover. Not a fun gameplay mechanic. Same with the Battlefield 4 UCAV. You could spawn with a UCAV at one point in Battlefield 4, launch it directly at the start of the round and get like 10 kills with a single UCAV right away. The rounds would always start with UCAVs flying through the air. It changed the meta. It was terrible. So yeah, these were some of the worst gadget features in Battlefield, and I hope they uh, can avoid some of them with the next title. Now this next worst feature is going to show my age a little bit, but at one point in Battlefield's history, supply crates would resupply certain explosives instantaneously. Like it depended on what type of explosive it was and what game it was, but the one that was particularly bad was Battlefield 2. You could resupply grenades instantly if you're standing next to a support crate. So. Guess what mechanic became popular in Battlefield 2? Grenade spam. People would throw down a supply crate and just rain grenades for days. In fact, there were certain areas of certain maps that were extremely easy to grenade spam. I remember calling a certain part of Strike at Karkin the grenade jungle, where if you ran through there, you were probably just going to get grenaded by some guy randomly throwing grenades through the air constantly into a certain area of the map because, well, it would get you kills and you could resupply them instantly. Such a bad game mechanic. It has sort of reared its head in different ways over the years with things resupplying too quickly, but DICE has at least balanced those out. Battlefield 2, back in the day, games didn't get patched quite as much and, you know, some issues like this would just be part of the game for its entire lifespan. Next feature on the list is something that people who got into the franchise with Battlefield 1 or Battlefield 5 would be unaware of. But previously, in games like Battlefield 4 and before, if you fired your weapon that was non-suppressed, you would appear on the minimap for everybody to see. So basically, if you had an awesome flank going, you shot one guy, well, guess what all the other players on the team, as long as they're looking at that minimap, now know that you're behind them and shooting at them and they're going to turn around and there goes your fun flank that you were having. You basically had to hope that you could flank so quickly that people just wouldn't have time to notice you on the minimap. But I ended up playing Battlefield 4 in a way where most of my time was spent just looking at the minimap because of how powerful that unsuppressed spotting mechanic was. One of the more common strategies was edit your UI, make the minimap huge, and just stare at the minimap half the time because it's gonna show you more guys than actually looking on your screen. Let's talk about a gameplay mechanic that was so bad it was literally game breaking in many maps for Battlefield 3. In Battlefield 3, when you put down a radio beacon, well, you didn't always just spawn on it. Some maps you would parachute in on this beacon. And the problem with just parachuting out of the air on any map is that, well, you could get on top of buildings and into structures where you were not supposed to be able to go. This happened on many maps. In TDM, it was a prolific mechanic that really, really destroyed the gameplay on certain maps. People would get up on top of roofs and into windows where you could never get to. And then entire squads would spawn up there. They would be healing and rearming themselves and dominating the maps or just cheesing the maps. This never got fixed as far as I'm aware and just kind of ruined a bunch of maps on Battlefield 3 for ever. The next feature on the list is super easy to use and powerful thermal optics. This is something that kind of introduced itself in Battlefield 3. It was definitely a, an issue with like this Faz 12 explosive rounds and stuff like that, but uh, it really reared its head again in Battlefield 4 and it's still there if you go back and play Battlefield 4. There's going to be a lot of players at the top of the leaderboard using thermal optics because it turns the whole game into a black and white mode where soldiers are white and the entire environment is black. So guess what? Super easy to spot guys, very, very quick target acquisition. And the only real way to counter it is to run thermals yourself. So now everybody's playing a black and white game. There's sort of an argument that flares can counter it and there's a few other counters, but yeah, honestly, uh, in my thousand hours of playing, they're not really great counters. And so this mechanic was just bad, exploitable. And if you wanted to play a good looking game, well, you had to play at a disadvantage. I hope they don't replicate the power of thermal optics in 2042.
The next worst feature on the list is the extremely overpowered air vehicles that always crop up in just about every Battlefield game and then the devs try and balance it and don't always succeed. Battlefield 3 had the attack helicopter with a dual flare system that both the pilot and gunner could use to break locks and so the best way to take down an attack helicopter was just shoot it with a dumb fire rocket that didn't require lock on stuff. Such a powerful weapon in the game and in the right hands it could just dominate a whole server. Same was replicated with the AC-130 in Battlefield 3 that never really got balanced. People just stopped playing that DLC content because it was so game-breaking. Um, Battlefield 1 suffered from a lot of the same issues. The attack plane it for probably the first half of Battlefield 1's lifespan was stupidly overpowered and you could do single strafing runs where you'd get seven 10 kills sometimes with the attack plane. Very easy to use, very exploitable. They balanced the attack plane, but then later they added this strategic bomber, which is one of the few things in the game that brings teamwork together because everybody hates the strategic bomber so much they all focus fire it down as soon as it spawns into a map because it can just fly at max altitude, drop tons of these little leaflet type airburst bombs, and they just kill everything on the map. So overpowered, and they're not fun gameplay Play mechanics. They're only fun for the one guy flying and everybody else on the team rages. DICE has definitely struggled with balancing air vehicles in the past. They've either been totally overpowered when fighting infantry or like totally ineffective when fighting infantry. I, you could look at Battlefield 5 as an example. There's rarely a nice middle ground on the title, so hopefully it's something that is well considered for the next game. Now, there's a lot of other items on this list. I kind of wanted to rally off a few of them without going into detail. Otherwise, this could be an hour long video, to be totally honest. The mobile anti-air tank meta versus infantry was a big issue in Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4. The quick time melee animations from Battlefield 4 were particularly awful with the counter mechanic being super buggy and not really working properly and just being a bad idea in general. Recent games have been so loaded with the on-screen reward icons popping up that they would actually cover UI indicators like whether or not somebody's trying to capture the flag that you're on, putting you at a disadvantage if you got a new award, a new star or ribbon or something like that. Battlefield 5 implemented a new vehicle aiming system for some reason that was far inferior to everything we've ever tried before. Their attempt to slow down tank turn aiming basically just made operating tanks really, really unenjoyable. They could have just copied, say, a world of tanks approach to it, but they didn't. They made some weird hybrid system that I hope never rears its face in any future Battlefield game. A bunch of previous Battlefield games have had respawn and vulnerability issues. That is, when you're flying into the map and spawning in, DICE has given your player a little bit of respawn and vulnerability. The timing of this has fluctuated between titles, but there were some games where for quite a while players would spawn in, they'd be invulnerable for like a second-ish, and you would dump a whole magazine into them, and then they would be like, oh hey, here I am, I just spawned in, look at this guy reloading in front of me, and then they'd kill you. The timing of it has been super bad in the past, luckily I think DICE DICE is more on top of it with their modern titles. Occasionally DICE will put an in-game item behind a massive secret assignment. These are those weird assignments that Battlefield 4 really made popular where you'd have to get like 10 guys in a server all jumping up and down and doing weird things at the same time to open some secret door in a mountain somewhere and then you would unlock like the phantom bow or there was one that would give you this great thermal camo for battlefield 4 which made it so you didn't show up on thermal optics which was a stupidly powerful thing and like less than one percent of the game population got it because to unlock this thing was such a pain in the butt and you had to join a private server with all the people doing the right things at the right time Stop doing that, DICE. Like, if you want to put some gimmicky skin behind it that doesn't have any impact on gameplay, fine. But putting actually good items and weapons in the game that are locked behind extremely difficult to accomplish secret stuff? Man, were those annoying features. And I still don't have the thermal camo in Battlefield 4 because I just wasn't going to sit through the rigmarole of trying to unlock it. Now, the next thing isn't exactly what I would call a feature, but as Battlefield games became better looking and integrating more detail and stuff like that, well, visibility got a lot worse. The devs didn't really balance visibility against in-game detail. Battlefield 1 kind of started things off with Passchendaele and like the Germans being able to just go prone in the map and you couldn't see them at all because their uniforms were the exact same color as the mud. But then in Battlefield 5, they just took it to the whole next level 
Everybody remembers how bad visibility was at launch. They tried to improve it a bit, but it's still one of those things that I have a feeling is going to crop up as an issue in the next game because DICE is always pushing the visual envelope but not knowing how to balance soldier visibility against it. Next terrible feature, let's go back in time just for the fun of it, Battlefield Vietnam. Anybody? Anybody play that one? I'm not talking about the Bad Company 2 DLC, I'm talking about Battlefield Vietnam, the second game in the franchise? Yeah, so this game came out, it was actually a pretty fun game, I enjoyed it, but they had anti-propaganda speakers in certain city maps that would just play all this anti-propaganda stuff that you had to listen to the whole time you played unless you found the speaker and destroyed it, which players would actively do, because the anti-propaganda messages were so depressing that it would just ruin your whole mood. I remember just stopping playing the game because I was like, man, this anti-propaganda stuff is really working. I'm like depressed now. I don't even want to. Well, why are we fighting guys? Like one of those funny features where they're trying to recreate the atmospherics accurately, except that recreating the atmospherics was just like semi torture because that's what it was designed to do in real life. Ah, good times. The next bad feature is Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 5, both employing ricochet hits on tanks. Battlefield 1 was not great about it, but Battlefield 5 again was like, hold my beer, we're gonna make this mechanic awful, and just made it so that certain tanks, there'd be tiny little divots or things in the armor, and if you thought you had a perfect straight on shot, well, your shot could ricochet off because it would hit some like, I don't know, bump in the armor and the game would calculate it as a ricochet and all your shots would fly off and deal very little damage to enemy armor. Really bad mechanic, doesn't really have a place in Battlefield games in my opinion, makes more sense in a game like World of Tanks where the armor angles and all that stuff are such a big part of the meta, but they just didn't implement it correctly in the Battlefield games and I think they should just get rid of it. And to cap off the rest of this list really quickly, we got Behemoths, again you could argue against them, but the gameplay mechanics were generally pretty bad. Uh, exploitable elite classes in Battlefield 1, there was a few classes on a few maps that could just stay alive the whole round and once you got it you could easily top the server, just poor balance for elites and just in general elites being something very difficult to balance against. I think DICE is done with the elite feature, but only time will tell. The private server system of Battlefield 4, as cool as it was and as much longevity as it added to the game, oh man, were badmins rough if you were a good player. You could end up getting banned from half the available servers in your region. It was not a good situation and still something that I remember with a lot of disdain trying to just play in a server where me and my friends weren't banned from it. And of course, there's more things on the list and things that we could argue about is whether or not they were good or bad features, but uh, yeah, that kind of does it for me. What do you guys think? Are there any features that you think I missed here that definitely should not be making a return? I posed the question on Twitter and there was a lot of argument on there about what was a good feature or what was a bad feature. There's definitely some debate here. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it in the comments below. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.